guys, it's Sam. Happy Thursday. It's Thursday, March 26th, 2009. Um, and today we're talking about going clothes shopping um, and fitting rooms and sections of the store and all that. This is my closet. A black hoodie. Black hoodie. Black hoodie. Navy hoodie. A navy hoodie. Black hoodie. Black hoodie. Navy hoodie. Black hoodie. I just thought that that was kind of funny. I thought I'd start off showing you what I'm wearing and where I got stuff. I shop a lot at thrift stores now. Um, and really, I don't think that they care. I don't think that they're really looking all that closely at you. And fitting rooms at the, um, the thrift stores that I go to are gender neutral. You don't even think about it. Like one is just like a curtain that you just like pull around um, and the other one just has two like little areas so I don't really think about it so much right now which is kind of nice this sweatshirt is from the Gap from uh, the Gap outlet in Watertown Massachusetts um, that I got probably man I don't even know a long time ago maybe like five or six or seven years ago um, and it's holding up pretty great it's just like a little frayed. It used to be my, um, what did I call it? My dress hoodie. Um, cause I like to wear hooded sweatshirts all the time. And, um, I used to wear it to nice occasions and now it's kind of tattered, but still works. There were men's and women's dressing rooms, but I didn't really think about gender so much then. So it was okay. Uh, this fine article of clothing, as you can see, it's a giant, giant flannel, um, and I adore this shirt, and it's totally tattered, too. It's got a big hole, and, like, the poor ends of the cuffs are just barely holding on. It's missing a button. Like, this shirt has been through the ringer, um, and I love it. My mom bought me this flannel in fifth grade, and... It's come in and out of my wardrobe, and it is here to stay, no matter what people say. I've had to deal with a lot of people going, Oh, is that your lesbian flannel? I'm like, okay, yeah, sure, it's my lesbian flannel. Um, but right now, it is not a lesbian flannel, because that's not how I identify. Not a lesbian. Um, that would involve being a woman. That's not really how I feel. So, anyway, different topic. Um, flannel. Fucking love this thing. Um... And my t-shirt underneath that, um, this is, I think from the Gap, I like rarely wear this. It's got like this flower kind of design, which clearly is not really my thing, but I just really like how it fits because it's pretty small and it's got this stitching stuff that I kind of like. And then I have a long sleeve shirt. I live in California and I wear like eight layers of clothing. Um, I have this long sleeve shirt underneath it, one of those like ringer things that's like, it's got blue sleeves but a white middle part. Anyway, um, I don't even remember where I got that. I don't know, long time ago. My pants are a whole nother topic. I love this belt. This is from The Gap. <laughs> Clearly I go Gap and thrift store, but whatever. Um, and I really like it because it's one of the like slidey ones and my weight has really changed a lot and it doesn't have any holes and that's actually really, really helpful. These are my pants. Um, they're huge and they're cuffed because they're so huge. Um, and I got these pants at the thrift store near my house called Out of the Closet. And, um, they're from the men's department. The thing about pants that's really annoying is that I now really don't want to wear girls' pants anymore. A couple weeks ago, I was talking about girl pants. I don't want to wear them anymore. They feel much too feminine. So, my problem is I want something that's loose around the waist, but not huge, huge legs. Like, my legs are not this wide. Like, men's pants are weird. So I need to try to find like a boot cut or something that has um, like men's pants with a good size waist but skinnier or slightly smaller legs 
Um, but for right now, I'm just rocking the giant, giant pants with the rolled cuff. I caught a glimpse of my butt um, earlier today in these pants. It's ridiculous. Do you see this? Like all this fabric. I look ridiculous. I've always felt really weird in women's stores. Um, and I've always worn sports bras and that way I haven't had to really go get fitted. I got fitted once. It was demoralizing. Um, it was for the prom in high school when I wore a dress and a strapless bra. I still can't believe that I did that. Um, maybe I'll show you a picture. You'd probably like that. I'll show you a picture. Here's me and my friends going to the prom. Me feeling kind of awkward. And, but that was the only time I wore like a real bra bra and now I'm just like over it and wearing my frog bra and it's great. Or my binder. I wear frog bras from Title IX Sports and um, they squish them down pretty good and it's a sports bra. Um, and going in there is kind of weird because it's a women's store. <sighs> but right now I don't care. And I could just order them online but they happen to be like a five minute drive from my house, so I just go. Um, and my underwear, I've been going back and forth between um, boxer briefs from the men's department and boxer briefs from the women's department, which is what Jay was actually talking about, which is really cool because Jay and I are like the same person sometimes. Men's boxer briefs is pretty much what I'm going with these days, and I really like that. I really like the like fruit of the loom sticking out from my belt and everything. I just think that that's really masculine. Oh, and my hair. I've clearly, I've kept it. Thank you all for your suggestions and encouragement. It's kind of a messed up hair day, but I'm liking it. So, cool. I feel pretty weird in the women's section. Um, I don't really go there very often anymore. With the men's section, I also feel weird um, because I know that it's not really my section either. They need a genderqueer section. Oh my god, would that be the coolest thing ever? A genderqueer section of the store. And there could be like a masculine genderqueer section and a feminine genderqueer section of the store. And maybe just a neutral genderqueer section of the store. Oh my god, anyone want to go into business with me? I think we could make like gazillions of dollars. So overall, we all care so much about what other people think of us. And it's only natural, but I feel like there's got to be some way for us to move past that and really just be who we are and be comfortable with it and happy with it and not worry so much about what other people are thinking. The whole idea of, of welcoming that negativity by assuming that people are going to be questioning your gender. Um, and I think that if we, don't, or if we don't go into it with that mindset, if we go in with I'm me, here I am, I'm gonna go buy some pants, no big deal, you know, like if we just go in with that kind of mindset, I think we won't welcome that negativity from people. We waste so much time thinking about that uh, energy that could be used so much more productively, so confidence. It's like that part in the OC where Anna goes, confidence, Cohen. Anybody watch the OC? OC season one, dude. That's like the best show ever. Um, no one has ever agreed with me on that. I really feel like the pilot was brilliant. It was it was like a short movie. So good. Confidence, go Cohen. Confidence. I'll see if I can find a clip of that. Do you know what girls find sexy? Uh, wait, let me guess. Dudes who play water polo. Confidence. Watch this. Seth. Yes. I don't have a date to the cotillion. Would you be my escort? I mean, I, I, Confidence. Go ahead. Let's do this. So I guess that's all I have to say. Hope everybody's great, and I will see you guys next week. I drank this whole thing of chai today. It was so delicious. Like this. Mm-mm-mm. Chai.